Good morning. This is Barry Bryson. I'm thanking you for joining me for five good minutes with the word. Today, we're going to introduce the Thessalonian correspondence. Um, Paul tells us in Philippians chapter four, verse six, that we shouldn't be worrying about much about anything. Uh, and yet it's interesting that he uh, that he tell, has already told us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that he worries about the churches every day. And in this letter, he tells us just how much he worries. First Thessalonians um, is an important and an interesting historical document in that it was written just a few weeks after the Apostle Paul had been in Thessalonica and not many weeks really after he had planted that church. This church is brand new. These congrega this congregation is filled with new Christians. And yet, as he writes to them, we meet a congregation that is firmly rooted, firmly grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians is his uh, greeting, and in it, these first 10 verses, he tells us exactly why they, they are so firmly grounded. The first is they were truly converted. They have turned away from idols to serve the true and living God, verse 9. The second reason is love. God loves them and they love God. Paul loves them and they love Paul, and they love each other. They exist in this immersion of Christian love. And the third reason is they are expectant. They know that the Lord is coming again. They are waiting for Jesus from heaven who will deliver them from the wrath to come. Verse 9. There are two reasons why the Apostle Paul wrote 1 Thessalonians so shortly after having been in that city. And the first is that he's worried. He left there um, in the midst of turmoil, some of their members had already been taken before the authorities. And in chapter two, he tells us he's so worried uh, that he just can't bear it anymore, that he uh, is left alone at Athens and he sends Timothy back to bring a report as to how they are doing. And of course, Timothy's report is they're doing very well. So in chapter three, he talks about that and how proud he is of them. He says in verse nine, what thanks can we render to God for you in return for all the joy with which we rejoice before God on your account? And then he prays for them, a prayer of thanks because they're doing so well. The second reason he's written this letter is because his teaching about the second coming has so imprinted itself on their consciousness that they have a question about it in 1 Thessalonians, and then they have a misunderstanding about it in 2 Thessalonians. The question they have is this, will folks who die before Jesus comes again be included in the glory of the second coming? And of course, he says absolutely yes in chapters four and five. They're going to be raised first and join Jesus in the air first, and then we'll all be joined together and we'll never be parted again. Comfort one another with these words. And so live your lives as children of day. Who knows that these things are about to happen? At the beginning of chapter 4, the end of chapter 5, he gives uh, advice on living godly lives. And we get these great one-liners at the end of chapter 5, like uh, pray without ceasing, uh, rejoice always. But mostly he's written to tell them, I'm proud of you, and don't worry. We're all going to be included in the resurrection because we belong to Jesus and we will always belong to him and to each other. 2 Thessalonians is written shortly afterward because they are so imprinted with this uh, consciousness of the second coming that some of them have left their jobs and they aren't working anymore. They're just waiting for Jesus to come again and they're causing trouble. He gets right to this in chapters one and two. And he says, yes, it's imminent. Yes, it's going to be glorious, but it's not going to come so immediately because a great falling away has to happen. But we don't know when it's going to come. So live your lives, chapter three. Don't quit your jobs. When we were there, we worked and we gave you an example to work. If you don't work, you shouldn't eat, verse 10. In other words, Paul and Jesus and John didn't tell us these things about the second coming so that we could factor out what it's going to be. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, of that day and hour, no one knows, not the angels in heaven, not the son, but the father alone. If Jesus doesn't know, you don't know, and I don't know. We just know that he's coming soon. And First and Second Thessalonians tells us how to live our lives while we wait for him to come again. I hope you'll read First and Second Thessalonians and enjoy it as a historical 
document um, and as an encouragement to live a daily life in Christ as we remember that he could come at any moment. Tomorrow, we're going to look at the letter to Philemon, which is unique in all of Scripture. The topic is slavery and what Paul thinks about it. Hope you'll join me then. Thank you for joining me today.